Parables, stories some only a sentence or two long, are often seen as the hallmark of Jesus' teaching. As Mark chapter 4, verses 33 and 34 puts it, With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Few of these private explanations have been preserved. The crowds then needed to find their own understandings, and we too must find ours. It is a very good thing that the interpretations, if indeed Jesus did provide them, have not come down to us. The gospel writers, in their wisdom, left most of the parables as open narratives in order to invite us into engagement with them. Each reader will hear a distinct message and may find that the same parable leaves multiple impressions over time. Different audiences inevitably hear different messages, just as today a listener who is poor or in ill health may form a different interpretation of the rich man and Lazarus than a person with a seat on the stock exchange or extended credit from Neiman Marcus. The parable of the lost son will convey different nuances to parents than to children, to the irresponsible and indulged, if such children pay attention at all, than to the faithful and overlooked. Reducing parables to a single meaning destroys their aesthetic as well as ethical potential. This surplus of meaning is how poetry and storytelling work, and it is all to the good. It may also be a good thing that we do not have the explanations that Mark's disciples heard and remembered. The Twelve, despite their commission by Jesus, consistently misunderstand him. They do not understand the parable of the sower, and Jesus despairs of their understanding any of the other parables. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Their lack of understanding shows when Jesus tells them to feed the crowds, and they sarcastically respond, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? Chapter 6, verse 37. Following the feeding miracles, Jesus cautions them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. Chapter 8, verse 15. The disciples then say to one another, It is because we have no bread. Not only have they forgotten that Jesus can cater, they have also missed the implications of Jesus' metaphorical message. No doubt when they heard the parable of the yeast, they worried about whether the dough was gluten-free. Although Peter, Andrew, James, and John are seasoned fishermen, they are afraid of being shipwrecked in a storm, and Jesus who had been asleep in the boat, has to rebuke them for their lack of faith.